So the coronavirus has now mutated into a new novel coronavirus, which is basically a new strain that hasn't previously been found in Homo sapiens. And basically, there's been a massive moral outrage on the internet about Chinese people and Asian people eating bats where it's possible that the virus has ultimately spread from because they share a common ancestor with a type of virus that's only found in these fruit bats. And basically, this market in Wuhan, um, it sold snakes, which of course kill and eat bats, and it's possible snakes also suffer from a virus very similar to the human coronavirus. And basically, it's thought that it's spread from this market, possibly from handling the snakes, because the snakes were infected from the bats that they've eaten. And so there's a massive moral outrage about how could people possibly eat bats or possibly eat snakes. Well, guess what? Eating pigs, eating chicken, eating lamb, eating cows is just as immoral as eating bats and other types of bush meat. Ultimately, they all cause suffering on the animal. And ultimately, so from a moral perspective, in terms of the animal's welfare, you are inflicting unnecessary pain on the animal. Whether it's a bat or whether it's a horse or whether it's a cow or chicken is no different in that regard. And secondly, from a nutritional perspective, the as I've mentioned in other videos, the overwhelming evidence is that Homo sapiens, our, our herbivores, are very close to herbivores in our natural state because our whole anatomy and physiology matches with that of herbivores. We have a small mouth similar to other herbivores because we're only supposed to eat starches, vegetables, fruits and nuts. We're not supposed to eat massive amounts of meat like other carnivores and omnivores are naturally designed to do who will use their mouth to actually kill their prey. Hence why we have very blunt canines uh, and flattened incisors, because we're not supposed to have these massive, sharp pointed fangs that will kill prey or, or chew through or rip through the flesh of an animal. You know, our jaws chew food. They, they have no real sheer strength like an actual omnivore or carnivore does like a bear or a dog or a cat and we we require as a herbivore batch feeding we require lots of uh, fiber for our digestive tract to work correctly whereas omnivores and carnivores do not require that they don't require uh, fiber to induce peristalsis that is done by their natural design and of course, we cannot handle the massive amounts of fat um, and cholesterol that is found in animal tissue, especially organ meat. We cannot handle that amount of cholesterol and fat. We get many different problems when that happens. We get something called lipotoxemia, where our red blood cells stick together, and co which causes red blood cell clumping, which affects the oxygen content of the blood when we eat a, a very high fat meal which causes ultimately heart disease as well we cannot handle that much cholesterol after we've been weaned our um, liver will produce all the cholesterol we need we don't need to take the cholesterol from the from the food but that is not true from omnivores and carnivores they do and they can metabolize massive amounts of cholesterol and fat in much higher than humans can without any side effects because of course that's their natural diet and as well the stomach acid contents of carnivores and omnivores are far higher in hydrochloric acid than, than homo sapiens because of course mother nature didn't think we would be eating 
that's any significant amount of meat, which of which if you was eating that diet, you would require a high hydrochloric acid content because you're having to metabolize all that meat all and digesting all that protein and killing all those pathogens that's found in the, in that meat is required by omnivores and carnivores. Hence why Mother Nature gave them a high hydrochloric acid stomach, but not humans. All these examples, even if you didn't know anything about, if you did absolutely zero studies into, or surveys, or epidemiological studies, into what humans eat, follow what they eat with surveys, and then watch how they live and die. If none of that was done, and an alien observer came down to Earth and simply examined the anatomy and physiology of, you know, humans, horses, chimpanzees, and bears, and tigers, and lions, or any other carnivore, if you simply examined their anatomy and physiology, any normal, intelligent person would instantly realise that humans have to be considered herbivores than omnivores or carnivores. That's without understanding anything about heart disease or anything else. That's simply looking at our anatomy and physiology and comparing it to the different species on this planet. Of course... There, we do have many studies, such as the China study, Framingham, the Nurses' Health study, and many other either epidemiological studies or clinical trials that have shown that humans are not designed to eat animal foods because they're too high in cholesterol and fat and too low, well, they don't contain any fibre, and too low in carbohydrates. For them to be consumed or to be considered part of our natural diet in any significant capacity. So it's completely unhealthy to eat bats, just like it's completely unhealthy to eat chicken or pigs as a herbivorian homo sapien. And secondly, a pig or a chicken or a sheep suffers just as bad in our factory farming as, if not worse really, than a bat does when it's killed. So people in the West need to get off their high horse and they need to look at the elephant in the room, which is that we kill millions and millions of animals every year in the most appalling conditions. We end their lives prematurely for food, food that was not designed by Mother Nature to be eaten by us. And then we suffer the consequences of eating that food. We get degenerative disease by eating the ridiculous amounts of meat and animal foods in our society. The, all the degenerative diseases that I've discussed before, the heart disease, which kills hundreds of thousands, if not millions, the heart attacks and strokes, the diabetes, the cancer that's caused, the arthritis that ruins lives, the uh, vision loss, sexual impotency, claudication of the legs, the autoimmune diseases that's caused from a lot of it by the dairy. So ultimately, to claim that the Chinese are so immoral and so wrong when we eat a much higher proportion of animal foods as a proportion of calories in the Western world, hence why we have much higher death rates from all these degenerative diseases than Asian people who have traditionally eaten starches like rice and noodles, which has traditionally been the bulk of their diet because of culture and history, which meant they, they naturally can't afford to eat the meat. And it is naturally better and healthier to live on noodles and rice and vegetables and not meat and animal foods. So while it may be true that these some of these bush meats and more exotic meat, if you will, like bats and snakes and reptiles and stuff, they can contain more deadly viruses like Ebola and coronavirus now and possibly other types of viruses 
ultimately, all animal food is unhealthy for human consumption. Millions and millions of people in the Western world die or have their lives ripped apart because they've eaten meat all their life. That is a fact. It causes heart disease and all the other degenerative diseases. Just because you don't die instantly or get a severe respiratory disease immediately, like if you was unlucky enough to get coronavirus, and if it were true that it did come from uh, the bat soup, or if it did come from the market that handled the snake meat, ultimately, all animal food consumption is unhealthy and dangerous. Yes, it's true that eating chicken, if it's cooked properly, will not kill you immediately. But if you do it all your life, yes, it will do. It will cause all the problems that we've discussed because it's too high in cholesterol and it's too low in fibre and it's too high in animal protein. So ultimately, people in the West need to wake up. They need to look at the elephant in the room, which is our disgusting amount of factory farming and animal consumption which must stop a massive source of our greenhouse gas emissions cut you know the carbon dioxide and methane comes from the farming of animals for consumption and it damages our health to the point where millions have their lives ended prematurely because of the side effects of animal food consumption and it causes grotesque, unnecessary suffering on animals that Mother Nature never thought would be consumed by Homo sapiens. So yes, eating bat soup is wrong and immoral. Eating snakes is wrong and immoral. But so is eating chickens and pigs and fish. And if you don't know that, you need to wake up and you need to smell the coffee. They're all completely wrong and immoral and unnecessary.